record, so I'm recording everything I do now. I'll put that to the side, and we are off. Okay, so base theorem is a fancy formula, but we want to build it up from the start, and, and the starting point is the conditional probability formula. And, and this is pretty much well understood. You can understand this just by the very nature of it, A given B. And a, a good understanding of this comes from the, the Venn diagrams, possibly. You, know, you just get the sense of the best understanding comes from a Venn diagram. You can get it from a tree diagram, but a, a fundamental understanding from a Venn diagram. So, so where does Bayes' theorem come from, and what, what's the flip round with A given B and B given A? Well, clearly, you could actually just write this down over here, couldn't you? The probability of B given A. A is equal to the probability of B and A divided by the probability of A. That makes sense. What's the probability B happens given A has happened? So given A has happened means that P of A has to be on the denominator here. All right. And then basically you're going to combine both these both these equations, and that literally is as simple as it, as it gets. That's Bayes' theorem. All right. So can you see that uh, there's a thing in common for both of these guys? If I highlight it in pink, you can clearly see P of B and A here, P of A and B here. Just because the A and the B are switched round inside the intersection bracket, it is still the same region. Think about the Venn diagram. That's where the overlap of A and B are. So it represents the same thing. So can you see that if we rearrange the P of A and B on both equations, we will get over here, this is P of a given B times by P of B. Over here, if you rearrange for P of B and A, that's P of B given A is e uh, times by P of A. And those expressions represent the same thing as P of A and B, or B and A. So these expressions are absolutely equivalent. Okay, And then it's just one more final stage to get to the, um, you know, the Bayes' theorem formula. If you divide both sides by P of A or P of B, it doesn't really matter. You just get Bayes' theorem in one way or Bayes' theorem in the other way. So there's a certain amount of symmetry. I'm going to divide both sides by P of B just to give the traditional, you know, A first. So if I divide both sides by P of B, you've got Bayes' theorem P of B here. Okay. So there's Bayes' theorem in all its glory. It's an absolute beauty. Oh, uh, that's supposed to be a highlighter. Right, now we're going to refer to that and keep coming back to it, all right? Um, when I read through the maths is fun, it was quite nice because I, I know how to write this out now. It's A, B, what is it? A, B, A, B, A, B, or something like that, okay? So if you come down to here, the way I, down this bottom section here, the way I wrote out Bayes' theorem here, and I'm just going to delete this and try and see if I can remember how to write it out, maths is fun was really cool. It said to remember it as just A, B, A, B, A, B. And I went, really? Is it as easy as that? Yeah, it is. It's P of A times by P of B given A divided by P of B. A, B, A, B, A, B. Okay, so I quite, quite like that from maths is fun. All right, so that's the first thing. There's how to derive Bayes' theorem from a very, very simple bit of algebra rearranging. Okay, The harder thing, of course, is trying to apply it in a context and understanding what the heck it does for you. Uh, but, but the second thing I wanted to show you is tree diagrams. And I want you to show the, the move from grade 9 and 10 to grade 11 and 12. Okay, Because, like so many things in maths, we kind of lie to you when you're younger, when you're little. Um, well, we don't kind of lie, we just don't tell you the full truth. So it's not really lying, is it? Think about the first half truth you were told, okay? Um, six subtract two is four, yes, yes. Two subtract seven, can't do it, can you? No. Yes, you can. Um, 16 divided by four, yes. 16 divided by three, can't do it, there's a remainder. No, there isn't. Um, the square root of four, yes. The square root of negative four, no. So we lie to you the whole time. But it's not really lying, it's just not giving you the full truth. So what's the truth and the half-life for tree diagrams? Well, here's a tree diagram. I've got two events, A and B. My tree diagram is this. Event A happens, event A doesn't happen. Okay, so we do event A first, then B follows. Now, usually what we would do is that, well, let's go for event B now. Uh, B in blue. So B happens or B doesn't happen. B happens, B doesn't happen, okay? 
And then we get to the end of the branches to get the final probability at the end of the branches. We multiply along the branches, okay? So on this branch, this would be P of A, and this would be P of B, okay? So at the end of here, this would be P of A times by P of B, okay? And, and, and there's the line, because that's not P of B at all, okay? P of B is not this. Okay, so that's the first lie. The lie is that the notation is just wrong. So over here, the event that happens is B happens given that A has happened. Okay, this is B doesn't happen given that A happens. This is B happens given A doesn't happen. B doesn't happen given A doesn't happen. Now you can see that's quite different to the lies we told you in grade 9 and 10. Like it, it kind of is and it isn't. <laughs> so at the end of this branch, can you see that you'd actually have P of A times by P of B given A? Okay? Um, Mr. Chair? Yes, I'm hearing you. Uh, but then, uh, how, back in grade 9 and 10, how did we accurately solve it then if we were using P of A times P of B? Uh, we, we solved it quite simply because we just bundled together uh, B happening at the end. We did Bayes' theorem in grade 9 and 10, but we kind of used it as the, this conditional probability formula. We didn't ever okay. really have to flip it the other way around. We always drew out the full tree diagram and then used the probabilities at the end to try and piece together to find out conditional probability. We never really used the formula. It was always from the probabilities at the end of the tree diagram. Um, I'll show you how to do the cats and allergies one using the tree diagram in a way that kind of resembles grade 9 and 10. And then we'll do it using the masses fun method, which is using the um, Bayes' theorem method. Okay. So in, the, in an idea, the Bayes' theorem takes away the need to draw out the tree diagram and calculate every probability at the end of every branch. Okay. So that, that's, the, that's the benefit of using Bayes' theorem formula. It can speed up the process of finding probabilities if you know which numbers to substitute in the right place. Yeah. If you don't know how to use Bayes' theorem, then given the questions we're going to tackle, you could always get the answer to the question by drawing out a tree diagram. Okay. okay. The problem with us moving on to the 11HLAA course and textbook questions is it doesn't just stick at two events A and B. It goes A, B and C. So that could be uh, a little bit naughty, couldn't it? Because if I go back to this now, do you imagine if I draw another branch, A happens, then B happens, then C happens, this tree diagram is going to get pretty monumental. Okay. So, so down here, I'm going to just fill in one more branch because I only want to highlight two branches. P of A not happening times by P of B happening given A doesn't happen. Okay? So that there's a tree diagram. There's two events happening. A happens, then B happens. Now, can you see for the two branches at the end that I've highlighted, that's a probability that B happens. Okay, so you've got combined events, A happening and B happening, first A and then B. But the two branches that I've actually worked out at the end, you should be able to see that this is actually the probability of B happening. So the probability of B happening is made up of two components, and I'm going to write that down here. The probability of B happening is made up of the probability that B happens given A happens times by the probability of A plus the probability of B happening given A doesn't happen times the probability of not A, okay? So it's quite fancy, isn't it, that the probability of B comes from both those branches. And again, it looks quite complicated. But this is where the final bit of Bayes' theorem comes from, because if I look at this bottom bit here, you'll agree that the first formula... This formula here is quite easy to derive. It just literally comes from the first part up here that we started with. Okay, and then we are now going to combine the new bit, which is down here, P of B, 
and we're going to replace the p of b here with our new expression. And this is the Bayes formula given in the formula sheet, I believe. So if I just delete that there, if I delete this guy here, and I'm literally replacing p of b with this big monstrosity here. And um, that's why I think people just don't like using Bayes' theorem, because it's an absolute massive beast to play with. And you're not quite sure what the heck's going on. If I just move that up a little bit. So there you go. There's Bayes' theorem formula. It's an absolute beast. But if you look at the formula sheet, it's given in that for format. Okay. Now just think, that denominator is literally just P of B. That's all it is. It's P of B happening. Okay. Uh, but it's broken up into various other pieces. So there's, there's the first bit. If I just pause there, come back to you. Thoughts? Comments? I mean, Vasa had a good point. Oh, no, we can literally keep with our tree diagram, um, you know, put numbers in the right place, do multiplications, get probability in the branch, and then use those probabilities. Another homework tonight, going to, and doing the questions, and then dipping into the textbook. Okay, so I'm going to go on to the, uh, the next page. All right, and uh, let me show you what we're going to do. Um, I'm, I'm going to pause the presentation, and I'll, 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 I'll pause the video as well, uh, because I want you to do something first. All right, um, let me show you. So this, this should look quite familiar to you. This is the cat allergy question. Okay. Now, what I want you to do is, for this cat allergy question, um, I'm going to structure a tree diagram for you to fill in. Okay, so copy the tree diagram, put the probabilities on the branches, and then we'll we'll rejoin. So here I'm going to draw. Oh, let me just get my pen on. I'm going to draw a tree diagram. Okay, um, and and this is this is the classic use of Bayes' theorem, um, and and obviously you know it's pertinent with the uh, the COVID-19 crisis and the idea about testing, testing, testing. Um, well, testing's great, but how accurate, you know, are the tests, basically? So here we go. I'm going to read straight from the, the question, and I'm going to look at this bit here. And I'm going to have a look at what the question's actually asking us. And I'm going to put the numbers on the right branches. Maybe. Okay, maybe. All right. So basically, if 1% of the population have the allergy, I'm reading here, and Hunter's test says yes, what are the chances that Hunter really has the allergy? Oh my goodness. So that there's a lot going on here, all right? Okay. And so the tree diagram is going to start with this information. Here, 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 and here, here, and here, okay? So this is the first thing. The first branch is going to be have the allergy. So that's A or not have the allergy. Okay, so that, that kind of makes sense, doesn't it? Allergy, not allergy. And so you're going to test both groups of people. So here and here, you're going to test both groups of people. For those that have the allergy, and again, I'm going to put P of A here, and we're going to P of not A here. Okay. For those who have the allergy, and we're going to use this information, If you have the allergy and you're tested, the test says yes 80% of the time. So here, this is probability yes given have the allergy. Okay? So this will be a, a yes at the end. Okay? So in fact, the 0 0.8 goes here, 80%. And now we'll put the other number on. And then we'll see how you can take it from there. All right. For people that do not have the allergy. Okay. So do not have the allergy. We're standing here. So for this information, there's a 10% to go somewhere. Okay. So you're going to fill this in, in a moment. And then we are going to fill in this last bit of information. 1% of the population have the allergy. So what's the probability of having the allergy? That's 0 0.01, okay? So we're going to do this question by just using a tree diagram. 
So your first job here now is go ahead and fill the rest of that tree diagram and then we'll congregate again in maybe five minutes time once you've fed it in. Um, if you do have the tree diagram at your disposal and you've finished it off, why don't you try and answer that question, what's the probability that Hunter has the allergy if he tests positive?